Man. And aren't you enjoying the praise and worship? Yes, I'm so enjoying that. Hey, let me uh, give you the right page numbers on your worksheets, okay? We're going to do some jumping around again. The one with the ugly, creepy frog, that's page one. And then page two, you got to flip over a while. It's the page that has a box at the top with the scripture, the Nile River will swarm with them. Just go ahead and mark that as page two, okay? The box at the top, the Nile River will swarm with them. That's page two. And then page three is, let's see, page three is across from the ugly frog. And at the top of that page it says, what are your frogs? Okay. And then page four is the one with the word search at the bottom. So if you get bored during the message, you can just do that word search. That's why I put that in there. So if anybody gets bored, you can still have something fun to do. <laughs> Oh, well, ladies, I want you to know, I, I don't do well with creepy crawly things. I'm, I'm a girly girl. I, it's hard for me to deal with insects and spiders. And I know you have geckos out here. That's hard for me. It's hard for me to deal with little rodents and things like that and reptilian type things. And true story, um, I'm out speaking about maybe 40 weeks or weekends out of the year. And I had been gone. I came back. I live in Oklahoma City and was just so tired. I was trying to go to sleep, but I wasn't sleepy enough to get to sleep. You know that feeling, don't you? You're tired, but not sleepy enough to actually fall asleep. So I was in my living room about 1030 at night, and I had all the lights in the house out. The only light that was coming through was a light that came through the television. And I was flipping through the channels trying to find something boring enough that would get me to where I would be sleepy enough to go on to bed. Well, again, in the darkness of the house, the only light illuminating from the television, and I'm trying to get sleepy, I'm kind of starting to nod off, I thought I saw, out of my peripheral vision, a little whoosh, quick movement on the carpet. And it kind of startled me, and I thought, no, I'm just kind of dreaming. But about 30 seconds later, whoosh, another quick movement. And so I got up and turned on the lights, and yes, there it was, a frog, about the size of a quarter. You can see it here, just a little tiny tree frog. You, no, it's not, oh, <laughs> it's oh, and it was freaking me out. I mean, I was, I, I'm in a panic mode now, because again, I just can't handle things like that. Like, I can't handle numbers, I can't handle things like this. And again, it was a tiny little frog, but it's 10.30 at night, so who are you going to call? 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 Well, I decided to call Mark Baker. He's my next door neighbor. And it just so happens about 200 years ago, I was Mark's youth pastor. <laughs> but he grew up and he and his wife now moved and we all go to the same church together and he's kind of my go-to guy. If something isn't working in the house, I call Mark. So at 1030 at night, Mark, it's an emergency. Come quick. So Mark came over, found the little tree frog, scooped him up and set him outside to freedom. It was a miracle. I didn't have nightmares that night. I thought for sure I would, but it was a miracle that I didn't. Well, even though I don't like frogs, it seems like most children loves fr love frogs. And it, it seems like little boys love to torment little girls with frogs, doesn't it? And fairy tales are filled with frogs. But always, they kind of bear this stigma of being something that you don't really pet or cuddle or nurture or hold close to you. They just have that kind of stigma as something not really uh, to be loved. Well, we're going to dive inside of Exodus chapter 8 this afternoon. And as we do, we will see a literal display of frogs going on. I mean, it's a literal display. And so we're on your worksheet now. I'm trying to find page two. Let's see. Okay, so way over here at the end. Yeah, no, yeah, okay. We're not quite there yet, but just be ready. Okay, so what's going on in Exodus chapter 8? Well, you may already know that the children of Israel were God's people, and they were slaves to cruel Pharaoh. He was a cruel, evil dictator for 450 years. And he beat them, he tortured them, forced them to bake bricks out in the hot sun. Then he took away their materials, their straw, and said, you have to go find your own straw. It, he was a terrible, terrible ruler. And they were slaves to him. They were in bondage to him for 450 years. That's a long time to be in bondage. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. No, you haven't been in bondage for 450 years. But to be in bondage 
for one day is just too long to be in bondage, isn't it? 450 years they'd been in bondage. And so they began crying out to God for Him to save them, rescue them, release them. God heard their prayers, and He was moving and working. But Pharaoh had a hardened heart. And so God sent ten plagues to soften Pharaoh's heart. Ten plagues, and the frogs are number two in the list of ten. So now we're on page two. We're going to jump right inside of Scripture then, okay? Uh, well... Let's see. We're not quite on page two yet, I guess. Okay, here we go. It's, we've got it up here. Charlie's got it up on the screen. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go in again to Pharaoh and tell him, Jehovah says, Let my people go and worship me. And if you refuse... I will send vast hordes of frogs across your land from one border to the other. Now let me repeat. Ten plagues. The frogs are number two in that list of ten. Okay, now we're on your worksheet on the, on the second page. Let's get back to the scripture. The Nile River will swarm with them. Ugh. And they will come right out. They're going to come right inside your homes, even into your bedrooms, and right into your beds. Ugh. Every home in Egypt will be filled with them. They will fill your ovens and your kneading bowls, and your people will be immersed in them. That's just sick, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, can you, ladies, can you imagine a miraculous infestation of frogs? And these were not cute frogs. No, these were not, there was not a Kermit in the group. There was not a Kermit in the group. These were gross frogs. Some of you may be thinking, Susie, that would be no problem at all for me because I, I like frog legs. Well, ladies, these are not frogs that you would want to cook and sizzle and fry. No, these were gross, vile, disgusting, bacteria-ridden frogs. Can you imagine discovering them in your flour jar when you began to make bread? Ugh. Can you imagine finding them in your bed when you try to sleep at night and hearing them croak in thunderous roar as you try to nod off and go to sleep at night. I mean, they were everywhere. Can you imagine seeing them on top of your sink right there on that, that little spigot right next to the Ajax? Do you see it right next to the Ajax? Ugh, uh, they were everywhere. The land reeked of frogs. They, they were everywhere, truly everywhere. They were in your bathroom. They were in your kitchen. They were in the laundry. They were on top of your dishes, ladies. And when you opened your oven, frogs would be inside. And when your bread was cooked and you sliced it, there was a foreign meaty taste inside because, yes, frogs had been baked inside the bread so the people couldn't, people couldn't cook. The people couldn't cook and they couldn't bathe because who wants to bathe in a tub full of frogs? When they walked, they walked on frogs. When they sat, they sat on frogs. Here a frog, there a frog, everywhere a frog, frog. Old MacDonald Pharaoh had a frog. E-I-E-I-O. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, now the Egyptians were a fastidious and ultra-clean people. So you can imagine their disgust when suddenly there are millions of frogs everywhere. When they drew water from the well, the bucket came up full of frogs. And when they dressed, frogs were inside their clothing. Now I know I'm talking a lot about frogs here, and you may be thinking, okay, we get the point, just move on. I just want to harbor on it for a little bit longer because I still cannot adequately describe to you how horrific this situation was. I mean, ladies, imagine you turn over in bed to kiss your husband goodnight and you kiss a frog instead. Somebody here is thinking, Susie, I do that every night anyway. No! No! Well... Pharaoh tells Moses he is sick of frogs. Please tell your God I'll do what he wants me to do. Wonderful! Moses is ecstatic. Let's get back to scripture. Moses said to Pharaoh, I leave to you the honor of setting the time for me to pray for you and your officials and your people that you and your houses may be rid of the frogs except for those that remain in the Nile River. Tomorrow, 
Pharaoh said. Okay, Moses is happy to go to God on Pharaoh's behalf. Okay, Pharaoh, God is able to get rid of these frogs. God wants to get rid of these frogs. God is willing to get rid of these frogs. You tell me, when would you like for me to go to God and pray that he gets rid of the frogs? And then Pharaoh says, tomorrow. <laughs> what? Why not five minutes ago? Right. Yesterday, right now. I think that has to be one of the most amazing lines in Scripture. Pharaoh could have had this terrible plague removed any time he wanted. And he says, tomorrow. He chose one more night with the frogs. God was willing to get rid of the frogs today. God was able to get rid of the frogs today. God wanted to get rid of the frogs. When? Today. But yet, Pharaoh chose one more night with the frogs. Pharaoh says, tomorrow. And I'm wondering, does this sound familiar to you? Because we often say the same thing to God. Tomorrow. And so I want to ask you, do you have any frogs in your life? Because many Christians do. So if you would say, yeah, I think I might have a frog or two, you're not alone. Many Christians are living with frogs in their lives. They may be hidden frogs, but eventually they'll hop out. Well, what are the frogs? Well, they can be little things or big things. They can be pet sins that we tolerate in our lives. Actually, they're strongholds in the heart. There are frogs of habits. Frogs of addictions, frogs of uncleanness, and frogs of lust and greed and pride. And there are frogs that people can see and hear and smell, and there are frogs that others can't see. Frogs in the heart and frogs in the mind. And though others may not see them, you know they're there. So why in the world, why in the world, when the answer for deliverance was standing right in front of him, does Pharaoh say, tomorrow? Maybe for some of the same reasons that we say tomorrow to God. So let's chat about some of those reasons. Number one, maybe his motto was, never do today what you can put off till tomorrow. Maybe he was a procrastinator. If so, I can identify with that. I tend to procrastinate. I'll tell you about that later. When you procrastinate, <laughs> when you procrastinate dealing with frogs, they multiply. And instead of allowing God to act immediately, Pharaoh chose one more night with the frogs. Second reason, maybe he thought, hey, the frogs will just go away on their own. He didn't really totally, wholeheartedly want to bring God into the situation. If I just wait a bit, maybe things will work out. Maybe they'll go away on their own. Well, guess what? Sin doesn't just go away on its own. If it did, Jesus would have never had to die a cruel death on a cross for our sins. We, we, we can hope, uh, wish sin would go away. We can, we can hope it would disappear. But only the blood of Christ can rid us from the plague of sins. So instead of allowing God to act immediately, again, Pharaoh chose one more night with the frogs. Number three, maybe he knew that if he would let God deal with the situation, God would also deal with him. And he didn't want to be involved in the situation. He wasn't willing to pray, Dear God, what would you have me do in this situation? Do I need to take responsibility in some of this? He didn't want to take any responsibility. I don't want to involve God because then he may want to deal with me too. You know, I've discovered as I read the Bible that most of the time in the Bible... In the Old Testament, when God did a miracle, or when He did a miracle through Jesus in the New Testament, most of the time, it seems as though God or Jesus would do about 98% of the miracle. And then the recipient would do 2%. Because Jesus would want them to be involved in the miracle. He would want them to participate. Let me give you an example. Noah, I will save you and your whole family from this flood but I want you to do 
I'll do 98%. I'll save you and your whole family from a flood that will destroy the whole known earth at this time. But I want you to do 2%, Noah. I want you to build a boat. It's going to be a really big boat. It's going to take more than 100 years to get it built. But you do that. That's your 2%. And then we'll talk more about this guy tomorrow, Naaman, a man in the Old Testament. He had leprosy. Well, that was a death sentence in those days. And God was saying, Naaman, I'll do 98% of this miracle. I will heal you of this fatal disease, but I want you to participate in the miracle. I want you to do 2%. Well, what's that? I want you to bathe seven times in the Jordan River. And so it seems like through the Old Testament and the New Testament, God or Jesus would do about 98% of the miracle, and the recipient would do about 2%. Lazarus! I'll do 98% of the miracle. I will bring you back to life. I'm going to start your heart beating again. I'm going to put the brain waves in your mind to life again. I'll bring muscles to life and tissues and ligaments. But I want you to do 2%. When you hear me say, Lazarus, come forth! You're going to actually have to pick up one foot, put it in front of the other, and actually walk out of that tomb. That's your 2%. Lady in the New Testament with the diseased blood. I know you've been bleeding for 12 years. That's a long time. Your body is so weakened now, it probably wears you out just to walk across the room in your humble little house. You've spent all your savings on doctors with quack remedies. Nothing has happened. And the whole village thinks you're the freak. They shun you. They call you an, an outcast. They have ostracized you. I'm going to heal you of your diseased blood. I'll do 98% of the miracle. But I want you to do 2%. Just pull your little cloak over your head so people won't recognize it's you and make fun of you. And go ahead and come outside. And anywhere you see a crowd, that's where I'm going, that's where I'm going to be. Just come up through that crowd and just grab any piece of me. Just barely touch me. A anything of me. Even if it just happens to be uh, the tassel or a piece of string or some hem on my robe. Just touch any part of me and you'll be healed. But that's your 2%. And so it could be that God wants to do an amazing work in you today and tomorrow in this women's conference that we're having, but He may want you to do 2%. He's willing to do 98 but He wants you to participate in His work by doing 2%. Well, Susie, what would my 2% be? I don't know. That's why it would be a great time right now in the middle of this message, for us just to bow our heads, close our eyes, and to silently ask Him. Would you do that? Just silently say, Dear Jesus, what would my 2% be? Dear Jesus, if you want to do an, an amazing thing in my life, I'm all for it. But if you want me to take some responsibility too, then you show me or tell me what my 2% is. Bring that to my mind right now, Jesus and I will be obedient. Amen. Well, Pharaoh didn't want to participate. He didn't want to have 2%, 1%, or even half a percent. So he said, no, let's deal with it tomorrow. <laughs> but we spend one more night with the frogs because we often make the same choice he did. But even more important than the reasons Pharaoh put off getting rid of his frogs is this question, what are our frogs? What are our frogs? What are the frogs in you? What kind of frogs do you have? What are the frogs in you that are plaguing you, surrounding you, that have you in bondage, that are keeping you from becoming all that God dreams for you to be? What would that be? When God says, I am willing to set you free. I am able to set you free. Oh, I yearn to give you victory and freedom. And we say, yeah, I want that tomorrow. Well, guess what, ladies? The time is now. And the place is here. You, 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 you are the one with whom God wants to work you are the one He wants to set free. You are the one He wants to bring closer to Him. You're the one to whom He wants to give victory. When? Today. That is good news. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I mean, that's a celebratory statement. Yes, He wants to give you victory. When? Today. So let's not answer like Pharaoh did tomorrow. No, God wants to work in you today. Okay, Susie, well, you know, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, it sounds good, but uh, I'm just not really convinced that God would actually get rid of my frogs. Really? Because my Bible says you serve a good, good, good father who wants to do good, good, good things for you. You see, when you ask God for a good thing, and getting rid of the frogs in your life is a good thing. He loves to do good things for you. In fact, let's just look at Scripture. Let's prove He is a good, good Father. On the screen here, Matthew 7, 7, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Which of you, if your son asked for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asked for a fish, would give him a snake? Well, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, how much more will your Father in Heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? Well, asking Him to help you get rid of the frogs in your life is asking Him for a good, good thing. And He loves to do good, good things for His children. Why? Because He's a good, good Father. And so let's just go to Scripture and prove that He's a good, good Father. I'm going to share some Scripture verses with you that have the word good in them, that describe God's goodness. But when it comes to the word good, I'm not going to say it. I want you to shout it out. Are you ready? We're going at breakneck speed. It's on the screen. Here we go. And now, O oh Lord God, You are God, and Your words are true, and You have promised this thing to Your servant. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and His faithfulness to all generations. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Yes, His faithfulness and His love endures forever. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and His faithfulness continues to each generation. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Praise the Lord for He is good. Now, O oh Lord, You are God and have promised this good. thing to Your servant. The Lord is good. a stronghold in the day of trouble. How great is Your which you have stored up for those who fear you. The Lord gives grace and glory. No thing does He withhold from those who walk uprightly. Yes, you serve a good, good, good Father. And He wants to show His goodness to you. He desires to help you. He yearns to set you free. And He longs to give you victory. Remember His words in John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Well, guess what's not abundant life? Living with frogs. <laughs> Living with frogs is not life. Okay, so how do I get rid of the frogs in my life? Well, we almost need to come up with a frog extermination plan, don't we? So let's do that. Frog extermination plan, step one. The first step and getting rid of the frogs in your life is to admit you have them. Okay, I admit there's something not right in my life. I have a frog. I have some, uh, some sin in my life that's keeping me from becoming all that God wants me to be. You see, the bad thing about frogs and sin <laughs> is that frogs grow. And baby frogs become big frogs, and frogs multiply. And any time you make room for one frog in your life, you've just given an invitation to the whole frog population. A female frog can lay more than 50,000 eggs at once. And ladies, baby frogs can hatch in as little as six days. So you can't have just one pet frog or one sin off in your life, cuddling it, coddling it, nurturing it, petting it, befriending it, taking care of it, without it affecting your entire life. Remember what Paul said in Galatians 5.9? He said, a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. So admit that you have a frog. Something's not right, Lord, in my life. Frog extermination plan, step two. Admit you can't fix the problem. 
This is too big for me, God. I can't fix this. This is out of my league. I can't get rid of this sin on my own. Well, Pharaoh recognized his frog problem wasn't getting any better. It was only getting worse and fast. I wish that he would have prayed this. I wish that he would have prayed, okay, dear God, I admit I cannot fix this on my own. I need you. I need you. So I surrender. Would you please help me, God? I don't want one more night with the frogs. Frog extermination plan, step three, hate your frogs. Hate your sin. Now the Egyptians reached the place where they hated the frogs. Ladies, God will not deliver you from something that you love. In other words, well, I know it's wrong. I know it's against God's will for me to have this in my life, but, well, if I'm going to be honest, I really like it. Okay, God's, God's not going to deliver you from something that you love. So, so what do we do? Well, I mean, what, what are these things in our lives that, that we tend to tolerate? Well, they could be any number of things. It could be pornography. It, it could be dirty romance novels. That's pornography. It, it could be drugs. It could be a bad temper, over-medicating. It could be self-pity or jealousy or unforgiveness. I can't ever forgive her for what she did. It could be lust. It could be anger, gambling, lying, cursive, go gossip. Well, it's not really gossip. I'm just sharing it as a prayer request. <laughs> <laughs> you fill in the blank. Again, let me repeat. You can't be delivered from something that you know is wrong if when you're honest, you really love it. Well, so what, what's the answer then? What do I do? Well, the answer is you have to agree with God. And God is calling you to hate sin. So agree with God to despise evil. You see, you have to choose to operate out of your heart, out of your spirit, and not your flesh. Because your flesh may lust after it and desire it, but in your heart, you choose to hate it because God hates it. And this is only done through the power of of the Holy Spirit. It's surrendering to God and letting Him have His way in every area of our lives. Okay, so Pharaoh finally realized he needed God's help. Good. This is great news for Moses. Okay, Pharaoh, you name the time. When do you want me to go to God and ask Him to eliminate the frogs? Tomorrow. Give me one more night with the frogs. I want to pet my sin. I want to indulge my flesh. I want to satisfy my lust one more time. You know I want to get my life on track with God, Susie. And I will. Tomorrow. A few years ago I was speaking in Florida and I had spoken on total commitment. At the end of the service, a lady came up to me, probably mid-30s, she said, I want to talk to you. I said, okay. She said, well, there's something in my life I know is wrong. God wants me to give it to him. I said, good. That's great that he showed you that. She said, yes, I've been involved a little more than a year in a phone sex relationship with a guy. And I know it's not right. And God wants me to get rid of that. I said, you're, you're absolutely right. It's not right. And I'm so glad that you realize that. Would you be willing to pray and ask God to forgive you and to commit that to Him? And she said, yes, I would. I want to do that. I said, okay, I want you to pray. And then after you pray, I'll pray. I'll pray for you. She said, okay. She prayed this beautiful prayer. Lord, I'm so sorry. I give this to you. I'm not going to involve myself in this anymore. Will you forgive me? And, and then I prayed for her after that. And after we prayed, I said, you have victory now. And through His Holy Spirit, He can continue to give you victory as you walk in obedience to Him. She said, yes, I'm so happy. I'm going to go home right now and call Him and tell Him it's over. <laughs> no, honey, it ends here. Not one more night. It ends now. It ends here. We don't want one more night with the frogs. It ends today. 
Let's go to Scripture, 2 Corinthians 6, 2. I tell you now. When? Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Salvation, being forgiven for my sins, also being forgiven for this frog or that frog, uh, the time of getting help, uh, salvation. Yeah, uh, today's the day. Not tomorrow. Today is the day. Now is the time to get rid of the frogs. You don't have to put up with the devil's mess one more day because you can have victory today. And I want you to know immediately... When Moses started praying, the frogs started dying. Immediately. When Moses started praying, the frogs started dying. God can give you power over every frog in your life. And you don't have to put up with them, ladies, anymore. But you see, many of us never step into the tomorrow that God has for us because we've refused to step into the today that God has for us. And today is the day of salvation. Being saved from the frogs, getting victory, being set free. Today is the day of deliverance and freedom. Today is the day of victory, ladies. You want a breakthrough? Yes, I do want a breakthrough. And you know, I've, I've heard that it's important that we give in tithes and offerings to our local church. I, I think that's pretty important. I'm, I'm probably going to start doing that tomorrow. <laughs> I, I know I should probably read my Bible more. You know, I read the Bible when it's on the screen on church, at church on Sundays. I read the Bible. I probably, though, should get out my Bible and read it more consistently. And I will. I'm going to do that tomorrow. It would probably be good for me to get involved in a Bible study. And I understand you have a great one. To get involved in a great ladies Bible study and, and grow and, and be, uh, get help to understand the Scriptures. I, I think I'll do that. Tomorrow. My marriage needs help. And we'll get it tomorrow. I have issues that need to be resolved. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll stop using credit cards in excess. Tomorrow, I'll... But five years later, nothing's changed. Well, today is the day of victory Today is the day of freedom. The time is now. You see, at some point, you just have to make the decision, okay, 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 today is the day I'm going to sign up for a Bible study or I'm going to commit to join that. Today is the day I'm going to go home and start reading my Bible a little bit every single day, even if it's just one minute every day. Oh, you'd be amazed at what that one minute will do. Today is the day I'm going to start tithing regularly or giving offerings to my church. Today is the day that my marriage will get help. I'm going to call and make an appointment today for a counseling session or today or whatever you fill in the blank. But it's, it has to be today. You see, your destiny can be greater than your history. We talked a little bit about that this morning. Don't let the past define you now. Well, your destiny can be greater than your history. And ladies, when... When a whole church, when a whole, and we are the church, the church is the body of Christ, when a whole group of us cries out to God, He responds when we're serious. So we need to pray for a mighty move of God, not only in our hearts, but in our community and in, in our church. He wants to do a new thing in your lives. And guess what? It's not going to look like the old thing. <laughs> Maybe you hear, a, you hear a message kind of like this and you go, yeah, yeah, sounds great, sounds great. But, Susie, you don't know me. <laughs> you don't know my past. Again, let me repeat at some point. You just have to say, Jesus, you come in and do whatever you need to do in my life because I'm yours. I saw this on a t-shirt and I wrote it down. A lady was wearing this at a place I spoke and I loved it. Maybe you've seen it. Her shirt said, The devil whispered in my ear, You're not strong enough to withstand the storm. Today, I whispered in the devil's ear, I am a child of God, a woman of faith, a warrior of Christ. I am the storm. <laughs> Ladies, that can be you. Refuse 
to let Satan rob you of victory any longer. You see, the decision that you make today at this conference, right here in session two, the decision that you make today to let God do whatever He wants to do in your life now can change your future. Today is the day of freedom. Today is the day of victory. Refuse to spend one more night with the frog. So would you bow your heads right now and just say, Jesus, I need you to speak to me. Would you just say that silently? Jesus, are there any frogs in my life? Would you say silently, dear Jesus, if there's anything in my life that's not right with you, would you bring it to my mind right now? And ladies, when he brings it to your mind, would you ask him to forgive you? And would you release that to Him? I'm going to play a song called Speak to Me, Lord. And as this song plays, you continue to ask God to speak to you.
these frogs appeared, it was a miracle. It was a miraculous infestation. God just miraculously brought millions and millions of frogs. They just appeared. Well, some of you may be thinking, what's the big deal? I mean, tomorrow or today, you said, Scripture said, as soon as Moses started praying, the frogs started dying. That's true. But remember, God miraculously brought them in. As soon as Moses started praying, the frogs started dying. Let me ask you, what's worse than millions and millions of living frogs? <laughs> right. <laughs> now, what are you going to do with millions and millions of dead frogs? Well, Scripture tells us that the Egyptians had to go around and pile them up into heaps. Then they had to put them on carts. They had to carry them out to the Nile River. How long did that take? Well, that would have taken a few months. Maybe even half a year or a year. I don't know. Maybe it's, no, uh, maybe it's no coincidence that the next two plagues were lice and flies. But my, my point is, if, Mo, if Pharaoh would have said, today, get rid of the frogs today, would God maybe have just whoosh, miraculously removed the frogs as miraculously as He brought them in? What I'm saying is there can be consequences in putting God off. And if God has brought something to your mind and He's made you aware of a frog in your life or some sin that's keeping you from becoming all that He wants you to be, there may be consequences to putting Him off to tomorrow or the day after. Let me read you what the Bible says in Exodus 8.13 after the frogs died. It says, The frogs died in the houses, in the courtyards, in the fields. They were piled into heaps and the land reeked of them. Another, uh, uh, in another translation, Exodus 8.14 from the message, the country reeked of dead frogs. In the King James Version, the land stank. <laughs> I bet it stank. And it did a lot more than stank, too. That's stanky stuff. <laughs> so ladies, I would, I would love to pray with you right now. And If there's a frog in your life or if there's a sinful area in your life that you would love to give to God, I would love to pray you through that right now. So let's just bow our heads and if God has brought something to your mind, let me just lead you in a guided prayer. First of all, thank Him. You can just do this silently. Thank you, Jesus, that you brought this blank and then name it to my mind. Thank you. Thank you for being faithful. I asked you to bring something to my mind if it wasn't right and you did. So I, I thank you for responding to me. And now, Jesus, will you forgive me for this blank? Go ahead and fill in the blank, ladies. Will you forgive me? I'm sorry. I've held on to this frog for way too long. And it is keeping me from becoming all you want me to be. And ladies, tell him this. Jesus, I want victory. I'm tired of living with frogs. I want spiritual victory and freedom, and wholeness. So Jesus, right here, right now, I give you my blank. You fill in the blank. I give it to you. I no longer own it. It's in your hands. And I thank you for taking it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Now help me to continue to walk in obedience with you. And if, if I happen to grab that frog back out of your hands, then would you nudge my heart and remind me, no, 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 you gave that to me, remember? First day of the ladies' conference, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, oh yeah, here, here, take it again, God. I'm giving it back. And help me to live in spiritual victory. I love you, Jesus. And I really want to be all that you want me to be. In your name I pray, amen.